Modi ore te whānau. Welcome into the practice run, your frontline pass to the heart of sports action brought to you by 99 Dreams, inspiring others to chase their dreams. With your host, Rauri Tukohirangi, and like at this point, we don't even know, but Brother Vincent should be here eventually. We're diving deep into the thrilling world of NRL and rugby league today, and who knows where the game will take us tomorrow. So from the try line to the sideline, we've got you covered. So strap in as we tackle the big plays, the game-changing moments, and the stories that define legends. Whether you're a seasoned vet or this is your first hit up, the practice run is for everyone. Every run, every tackle, every win, experience the rush with us. With exclusive insights, couch analysis, and a touch of humour, the practice run is here to keep you entertained, informed, and part of our practice squad. Because here, every practice run takes us one step closer to glory. The Practice Squad, where every listener is MVP, powering our plays every episode, every day. And shout out to our primary sponsor, 99 Dreams, for powering our passion. Now let's kick things off with today's lineup. Today's lineup looks like this. We're going to go through our Mount Rushmore. They probably will look similar. Uh, like League hasn't had a plethora of athletes like you have in the NFL and in the NBA. However, there may be some differing views on a couple of players. Um, and we even mentioned some close omissions. Then we'll be diving into some of the preseason games over the weekend, including the international match between Wigan Warriors and the Penrith Panthers. And then we'll follow that up with a lovely game of Guess Who again. We're bringing that back for another jam. You seem to like it last time, Farno, so we'll kick things off with another one of those later on in the, uh, in the episode. But for now, you know what time it is. It's time to rock off with Ryan too. I need to get back in that win column, Farno. I need to get back in that win column. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, shoot. Oh. And bring it up. Duh. That was bad timing on my part. I was like, wait, are we? All I heard was shoot. Yeah, was three, like, oh. two, one, shoot. Yeah. Ah, all good. All good. All right, here we go again. Uh, we both went rocking that round. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, shoot. And bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> we both went rocking here. Oh, okay, okay. here we go. All right. Three, two, one, shoot. And bring it up. Ah, you got me. <laughs> I was wondering who was going to fold on the rock first, G. I was actually thinking, oh, that, yeah. like, I'm pretty sure he's not going to change. And I was like, oh, no, we'll change, we'll change. <laughs> I feel like we've got to get to a point in this game where we just end up knowing each other's tells. And when yeah. it comes to paper, scissors, rock, like if you go rock one, two, you know you're probably going to go three, four. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. Uh, I guess it'll just keep getting <laughs> longer and longer as, as the uh, as this show continues. Imagine like four or five seasons down the line from now, we're still playing paper, scissors, rock. That'll be pretty dope. We're going to have to add uh, like... Fine, if you see us out on the streets. We're going to have to add in like other... Like... Paper says rock. What's the one? What did they do on a Big Bang Theory? What about those three other Spock and Lizard stuff? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look it up. Look it up. Isn't it, like it? Big Bang Theory, Paper says rock. It's ridiculous. Uh, we'll look to add some of those in the future. Because I was like, we, c we can't really do the thumb lift up and right. Because, like, can't, eh? too much lag. Yeah. Yeah, too yeah. much lag. But Fano, hey, if you see us in the streets, out and about, challenge us to some paper, scissors, rock, and, you know, bragging yeah, rights. We're not going to actually give you anything, but bragging rights. <laughs> We're not that rich. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, moving along into our Mount Rushmore. Uh, since I want paper, scissors, rock, should we, should we unveil the whole Mount Rushmore? Should we go one for one? And then give it a little, little bit of a reasoning as to why you picked X person as opposed to Y. We could go... We could just do all of it. All of it all at once and then Yeah. Easy, easy. Well I'll go I'll go through mine after you. You want me to start? Okay, where's my Sorry, I'm just looking for a pen. Easy, 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 easy. Alrighty. 
<laughs> yeah, so, so for my... those of you who don't know what a Mount Rushmore is, uh, Mount Rushmore is the United States president's mountain. Um, and it's commonly uh, referred to in sports like um, as a way to describe that particular sport's top four greatest players of all time. Uh, the NBA's Mount Rushmore is highly debated. Uh, I think back in the day it used to be like Larry Magic. Uh, what's his name? Kareem and Bill Russell. But now a lot of people will say it's, you know, it's obviously LeBron, MJ. Is it Kobe and Shaq? Some people debate whether it's Kobe and Shaq. I've got to say maybe it's Steph and KD. But that's a different sport and that's a different argument. So, too, what do you got, brother? So, no surprise, my Mount Rushmore is a bit of uh, Bulldogs biased. I just can't help it. I Ooh. just went with pretty much who, I, who my favourite players are. <clears throat> so, okay, okay. first member of the Mount Rushmore is Cameron Smith. As much as I hate him, you can't really... That's probably hmm. one that I'd say is unanimous. He's just done it all. He holds so many records, it's stupid. Would you go as far as to call him the GOAT? <clears throat> it's pretty hard to to go against him. Uh, you know, he's played, what, 400 games? He's won how many titles? He's part of that ridiculous run with Queensland. He's won, you know, what, World Cups with the Aussie team. He was just so good for so long, just consistently. His influence over the game is ridiculous. Uh, easily the best nine ever. Um, so yeah, if it's not him, there's you know a few others, but yeah, I'm actually going to change one of them. Uh, yeah. So yeah, Cam Smith, he's he's just goaded. Next one, my personal favorite player, and the reason why I'm a Bulldogs supporter. Hmm. Well, there's two of them, but only one made the list. Is I'm um, Al Mazzari. He won me quite a bit of money off the old man back in the day because the dude just never missed kicks. Honestly, the amount of $5 <laughs> bets I'd won off the old man be like, Dad, I bet you $5 he makes this kick. Yeah, you're on, and he would always do it. Um, and it's pretty much it. He's my favourite player of all time. Um, my second favourite player of all time is Benny Barber, but he didn't make the list, unfortunately. Um, he's just he's just electric, yeah. So two favourite players of all time are both Bulldogs. Yeah. Third on the list is Jonathan Thurston. I think that's what he meant to the game. And his dominance also was a former Bulldog for a year. I don't know how we let him go. <laughs> um, yeah, again, done it all. Part of that Queensland team. That was just pure dominance. He, The way he took that Cowboys team from what, what felt like a wooden spoon team his first year there, wins Stallion, takes him all the way to the finals. And, they were, you know, he always had them there or thereabouts. Had a few heartbreaks in the playoffs, but finally got it done in 2015, thanks, uh, thanks to Benny Hunt. Uh, as much as I hate, like, that we lost that grand final, um, I'm, like, not too mad that Jonathan finally won, like, his own ring. Like, he, mm. he obviously won two rings in his career, but now he's got one that he can actually keep because there's that whole story about him giving away his championship ring to Steve Price, who didn't actually play the game. Mm. So, yeah, I, I just think he has to be there. And the last one, um, Andrew Johns, just dominant. And everyone pretty much has him as the GOAT, leading up until probably Cam Smith, and even now it's still debatable. Uh, he's just the perfect half, did it all. His ability to dominate the game and just control his team, even though and, you know, he was winning Dali M's even when, even when his team was trash. Uh, so, yeah. Andrew Johns, it's pretty hard to not to put him up there. That New South Wales game that he played, I think it was in 05, where he was out for like a month, come back straight into the origin side, and man in the match, probably one of the most dominant performances you'll see from a player single-handedly won in that game. And yeah, it's interesting because I remember they asked the Cam Smith, Billy Slater, and Jonathan Thurston, all those boys, they asked if Andrew Johns was playing like, would they have won the eight? And they they all said, probably not. And Andrew Johns was like, that's definitely, you know, that side they won eight in a row, he would have loved to play them. And for them to say that they probably don't win eight in a row if he's there, it just shows how much respect they have 
for him? He was an animal, man. He was he was a different breed, bro. Like Andrew Johns just knew how to get it done. He he was a master with that ball, but that would have been that would have been some epic battles. Could you imagine? Um, instead of just changing the Blues halves pairing every other year, having Andrew Johns as the number one seven every year, you know, just locked and ready to go. Uh, but yeah, that's my um, Mount Rushmore. Could it change in a few years? Definitely. You know, you never know what happens. That's just my answer for today. Ask me at the end of the season, I might have a different answer. You just never know. Um, but yeah, man, that's mine. I stand by it. And don't come at me with the Hazamal Mazuri comments. What can I say? He's my favourite player. It's my list, right? Let's make up your own. Hey, to be honest, if anyone comes at you for the Hazamal Mazuri, that, that, that's just a wholesome core cool memory right there, you know? <laughs> That, 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 that's father son time, man. <laughs> if you come and you're just a straight hater, it's, it's probably because you've had a bad childhood, you know. Parents didn't love you and hug you enough. Get off Probably because they were betting for the other kickers, then they missed it. No $5 <laughs> for you. Get outside and touch some grass. <laughs> but yeah, man, that's me. Over to you. What you got? All right, all right. So my Mount Rushmore looks kind of similar. Kind of similar. I think the ultimate is. Cameron Smith, you can't not have him on your Mount Rushmore. I mean, if you do, you're probably just a salty ass fan and don't actually look at the numbers. Like I am not a fan. Look how many rings he won. He didn't need them all. He didn't need, even even the years they cheated, they didn't need it. But he's just that damn good. He just knows how to win. He knows how to whinge, but he knows how to win too. So um look, he's he's just a great player. You can't knock him. The dynasty with the Melbourne Storm, the dynasty with um the Queensland team, success early in his career and success at the end of his career. You you can't hate on that, man. He, he's eerily similar to to the likes of Tim Duncan, you know. One early on in the career and then towards the end of his career, he still managed to get to the grand final. So what does that say about that man? And he held off the likes of Harry Grant and Brandon Smith, you know, in his later years. And look at those two. They're dogs. But he was still able to get out there and command it, you know, play for the full 80, solid tackler, guided the boys around the park. He just, yeah, there's not enough words to um, sum up the greatness that is Cam Smith. Second, and I've got to say he's probably the greatest fullback of all time currently, currently as of uh, the 27th of Feb, uh, 2024, is the great Billy Slater. Not only is he a great player, but it turns out he's a great coach, which sucks. <laughs> it just looks like, you know, us New South Wales fans can't catch a break. Um, but look, Billy Slater, man, what can I say? Yes, he played with the likes of Cooper Cronk, um, Cameron Smith, and a plethora of world-class forwards. But man, he just knew where to be. He knew where to be not just on attack, but he knew where to be on kicks. Like, if Benji was coming into a game, Billy almost, like, certainly knew exactly where Benji was going to kick every time. He did so much research into everyone's kicking game that in certain situations, he knew where to position himself so he's not chasing for the ball. And, like, if you watch a lot of Billy Slater's highlights, seldom is he, like, letting the ball bounce. He's almost at the ball every time just as it's about to land. So, look, you can't knock the greatness of the great Billy Slater. And again, a part of that Queensland dynasty. Something, you know, about this this Mount Rushmore is just tied to this Queensland dynasty. And, you know, you can't, um, you can't argue with it either way. Yeah. Now, look, another player I went on here with uh, was also part of that Queensland dynasty as much as I hate to say this, but he's also a great, great player. He's one of my favourites from the Brisbane Broncos. He played opposite of uh, Thurston. He was the number six. We go with Darren Lockyer. Uh, look, his transition from fullback into the halves, seamless. Probably the best to ever do it. Um, currently, again, currently, these could change. I feel like in the future, Reese Walsh could make that transition. Mm. Um, but for now, <clears throat> Darren Lockyer, the greatest to just go from fullback into the halves. Time at the Broncos, we won quite a few championships with Darren there. Um, and then, yeah, again, that Queensland dynasty. I feel like that's what kind of gets you on the on these, um, you know, 
greatest of all time kind of lists is your consistency over a long period of time. Um, the Broncos were almost always there or thereabouts in terms of getting into the um, finals when we had Darren Lockyer. Um, and yeah, that whole Queensland run, he was, he was a key part of that. Uh, and he also went from being bald as a player to he's kind of got hair now on the commentary team, which <laughs> bars me out. So shout out Darren Lockyer. Greatest comeback on the field of all time. Yeah, nah, good now. So, um, yeah, nah, look, love Darren Lockyer. And my final player too is Joey. Um, the only New South Wales player to make this list and, you know, to knock out the likes of a Jonathan Thurston, um, Greg Inglis, um, you know, there, there, there are a lot of great players that played on that Queensland side. You can even say Mal Meninga because of his player and coaching abilities. You could say that he has a spot up on that um, that mountain as well. But I think, yeah, look, Andrew Johns, Cam Smith, big goat, mini goat. Is that, that, that's that whole kind of debate. They're edging each other around. And, you know, like two said, if he was around at the same time as, you know, Smith and the rest of those boys, could it have been, you know, maybe just a three or four year run instead of an eight year run? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? But look, I'm just happy we stopped it before it got to a decade of dominance, but it might as well have been. So, um, yeah, Cam Smith, Billy Slater, Darren Lockyer, and Andrew Johns. That, that, that's my Mount Rushmore. Uh, but can I ask you a question too? The rate, um, I, uh, not Ivan, bloody um, Little Cleary, Nathan Cleary's going. Mm -hmm. He's definitely going to wind up at the end of his career on, on a Mount Rushmore. The question is, who would you move off of your Mount Rushmore today to suit Cleary, say he goes on to win another Origin series, he wins another Grand Final. He say say he wins four in a row, and he wins another one or two in the future, and he goes on to win another Origin series and maybe another World Cup. Where do you who do you take off, and you know where does he wind up in terms of the goat conversation? I mean, if he continues on the path he is, he probably will be the goat. I don't think anyone will doubt it, and he's probably could arguably be there right now with the run that he's had and the dominance that that team has had. Um, the rest one would be, as much as I love Hazamal Masri, he would probably be the one that, that gets uh, kicked off the list. Um, but yeah, he's. you could make the argument that he's there right now. Three... Mm. You know, three NRL titles, a couple of Origins. He's got a World Cup under his name. He's been the best player in the game for probably the last you know few years, and he's still what mid twenties, so he's still got a long time yeah. to go. You know, barring injury, you know, knock on wood, you know, his he doesn't get injured, things like that. Um, but he's he's going to be right there thereabouts. Yeah, give it a couple more if he can do it. It'll be interesting to see what he's like when Luai's not there. Uh, and with the plethora of players that they've lost, um, but yeah, he's—I'd say he's easily going to be in that in that Mount Rushmore, and he could very well truly be pushing Cam Smith and Andrew Johns for that for that spot. Yeah, yeah, I fully agree with you there. And man, I don't know who I'd take off. I—I I think it would have to be between Billy and Darren. Uh, and I'm not too sure which one would get edged out for Cleary. And like you say, he's probably there right now. Uh, we haven't seen, you know, someone as young have as much success um, as he has had. And like you say, he just keeps, well, not just him. There's a whole team behind him, great coaching staff and things like that. But, you know, in the crucial moments, who tends to put their hand up and just gets things done is... Um, Nathan Cleary, so yeah, I'd love to see how he gets on without Luai, but I don't think he'll miss too much of a step, really. I think it'll just push his points further up into getting that Dally in because it might just be a one-horse race. I mean, Dylan Edwards is still there, and they've still got a lot of key players, but, you know, I think that will be a welcome challenge to Cleary. It looks like they don't really back down from too much, <laughs> uh, which I guess is the perfect segue into um panthers versus wigan what what did you like what did you not like um and 
where do you think the Panthers can improve? Because, you know, a good thing for the Panthers um, with this game is that they didn't win. So it doesn't mean that, you know, everyone's coming out and they're going, oh, look, there they are, they're perfect again. They've got room to improve, which is always good to have at the start of the season, not towards the end of the season. But at the start of the season, always good to have things to work on, things to improve moving forward throughout the season. So what, what did you like from that game and what, what did you not like? It was a kind of an interesting game. Um, to be honest, when I was watching it, it just looked like the Panthers were, I don't know, going through the motions a little bit. Because in their first, if you watch the game, like the first 20 minutes, they ran the ball on the final play like 10 times a foul. You know, not norm, not doing their grubber or kicks to try and get a reset, uh, line drop out. They would just run it, which was crack up. Funny to watch, but... One thing I noticed from Penrith oh, is kind of on the, um, let's see, maybe the improvement is there's probably the one time where it was noticeable that they had lost players, like not having credit there in their centre spot. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do. They're not saying that Taylor May can't step up and be their dude, but it was noticeable that, because yeah, it was noticeable that credit wasn't there. Um, so that's one thing I noticed. The second thing I noticed, they they looked fine on attack, like when they had chances, they were you know they weren't quite clinical as they normally are, but again I think they just played into the tactic, like the tactic of not kicking on the last one was weird. I thought it was also kind of low-key, a little bit disrespectful, because um, <laughs> <laughs> when they finally when he finally did kick, they scored. Um, but yeah, that was just I think some of the tactics they played was a bit weird to start the game. I think they kind of went into it just thinking they get they could just turn it on, like you know, um, we'll just turn it on and we'll just roll over the top of them. Which to Wigan's credit, they didn't. But Penrith didn't really make as many adjustments. Uh, the main one being in the ruck, they got barely any quick play the balls. Wigan had at least three, if not four, in the tackle. And they always took the person to the ground. To be fair, though, they were holding like a, like nothing else. It reminded me <laughs> of why I think like the Storm is so good because the Storm always win the tackle and they can they never give up quick play the balls, which are half like holding and half of them could easily be penalties. But yeah, like I thought there was clearly a tactic of Wiggins to slow the play the ball and it worked. It worked, man. Four in a tackle. They were holding for days. I think they only got penalised like twice. And I don't think Penrith adjusted to that well. Because uh, they were frustrating the boys. They were frustrating Fisher-Harris, frustrating Moses Leota. Isaiah Yo had a great game. He made a few breaks. Uh, he looked devastating. But yeah, just those little differences between the styles of play. I think they just weren't ready for it. Well, it seemed like they weren't ready. And his first game of the season. Yeah. Good things about Penrith, that back three is still devastating. As long as you got Edwards and To'o. Um, I think Taruva was the other winger. They always get them into good starts. So you got Dylan Edwards catching. Uh, he's always got like a good 10, 15 metre run off the start. Then you got To'o coming off. So as long as that back three is there, or especially that back two with Edwards and To'o, I think, I think they'll be okay. <laughs> I think they'll be okay in returning it. And then you've got the uh, Liam Martin or Mini Brock Lesnar. Another great game. He was just vicious. His running, his ball running, his tackling, next level. And then you got Isaiah Yo in the middle. Cleary just controlling it. The number six, Jack Cogger. Oh, no, not Jack Cogger. Jack Cole, I think is his name. Young Buck. He looks like he's going to be the favourite to replace Loa when he leaves. Um... He just looked young. Look, you no, know, just ah, you yeah, could tell. Yeah, like, yeah. That was his first game. First game. Um, so, yeah, and it definitely showed. But he had moments too. He looks like a bit of a ball runner. Um, he ran some good lines, got a few good breaks. But you can tell that he was just young. Maybe the moment was a bit too big. But, you know, you got to blood them sometime, right? So, yeah. Yeah, overall, Penrith were good. They had moments, they just didn't ice it when it counted. And I just, I don't think they were prepared for that style of game and they didn't adjust, I don't think they adjusted that well. Um, yeah. Did they get 
hard done by with some harsh calls. Yep, I don't know how you give that try. I just, <laughs> I don't know how. You know, the fact that that went up as a try, I just, I don't understand. Like, because he was, he, pretty sure the ref was late to the spot. He had some, he see, he was behind the play. He didn't move to see it on the side, then caught it as a try. Like, uh, I just, I don't get it. Very, and that pretty much a controversy call, you know, for that one to be, to go up as a try, I don't know how that to me is, should have went up as a no try every day of the week. Um, and same with the Taylor May try at the end there. Right, like I get that one going up as, as no try. If you don't see the ball hit the ground, then yeah, send up as a no try. But Harry sent the other one up as a try. Don't get it, man. Uh, but yeah, that was <laughs> pen of, that's pen of the, they got hard done by in those calls because I don't know what their ruling is. Their ruling in the bunker is you need evidence to overturn it. And every camera angle showed nothing. You know, they couldn't see the ball at all. So because it went up as a try, he couldn't overturn it. Just, I don't know, stupid to me, but it's the way it goes, man. Yeah, so that's my thought it on Penrith. Yeah, what about you? What do you think of that game? Yeah, I caught the highlights. Um, it just looked like maybe the Panthers uh, have a little bit of winner's fatigue. Um, you know, they've done this for the past, what, this is the fourth year now in a row that they've had to go over, oh, third year? Third year in a row, sorry, that they've had to go overseas um play in one of these exhibition matches and then come back for round one the following week like great opportunity for exposure for them but man it's a lot of extracurricular activity Mm -hmm. just for another game like they've been over there for i think two weeks now they've been doing heaps of press conferences they've been working out of um a lot of football clubs training grounds and things like that so more media appearances through that more sightseeing more distractions to the game, I think, for some of the players. So I could definitely see uh, them getting a little bit like uh, over it, just go out there and jam. And maybe that's why they decided to just run on last instead of <laughs> going for kicks and things like that. So, you know, they've been the, the gold standard for a long time now. Uh, and it's, it's, it's kind of good to see them kind of returning to a, a, a realm of normality. Um, because there's no way that other clubs are being able to rise up, even though they're claiming a lot of former Panthers players as they come off the salary cap. Mm. Um, yeah, like you said, can definitely tell that they're missing a few key players. Um, it's, I think it's not a lot to be worried about right now because those combinations can grow as the season grows. Um they're all still really talented and they still have that core group of guys. They still got Yo, they still got Clary, they still got Luai, they've still got Tor, they've still got Edwards, um, they've still got the Bash Pros in the middle there, man, far out. What else could you ask for? You have got a great group of guys, great coach. Um hard done by. So like Panthers fans can probably in their mind chalk this up as another win. Um I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to see them back uh, playing against Australian teams just to see where, where the benchmark is um, in terms of where they're at. Who is their round one game? Uh, let me have a quick look. I think it's Henry a doozy. Panthers, yeah, I think it might be the Storm. Oh, that is would it the be. Storm? Uh, 2024. Let's have a look. Yeah, it is. Round one versus Melbourne Storm. Uh, that will kick off live. And from where? I'm trying to pull it up. That's My it, wife um... might be lagging a little bit. Amy Park of yeah. Melbourne. Friday night. So it's the last game on the Friday night. 10 and 5 p.m. NZ time. I'm not too sure what time that means for the rest of the world, but 10 and 5 p.m. NZ time. So that's after the first game. But man. It's, that's going to be a good game. So yeah, it's going to be a real Panthers, good game. Panthers in their previous two meetings last year beat the Storm 26-6 in August and then 38-4 in September. Melbourne fans, I know you'll be looking for some restitution as, uh, what's his name, 
Oh, she had a shop, sis. <laughs> I want my restitution. <laughs> so you guys will be looking for a bit of restitution out there from the Panthers. But hey, look, that's going to be a great game. What a way to kick off the season. Mm, definitely. I was going to say um, how you were saying they got a bit of win- winner's fatigue. I'm actually kind of thinking the other way. They're where they want to be. I think they're, they've been here, what, four times now, like we said. Um, so they know how to... Uh, go through the season, should, should I say. They know it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. So they're not going to be too up in arms if, say, they lose their first two games because they know it's a grind. And once they get into their grind and their system, it's it's over. It's a long season. And they're probably one of the teams that they can come out slow and still be there or thereabouts. You know, they have their plan. I think all they're thinking is getting their top four and they'll be ready and rolling by the playoffs. So if it means they got a slow start, then it's going to be a slow start, but I don't think that's going to... They're not going to be too worried about it. They're not going to hit the panic button if they're 0-3 to start the season. Um, yeah, but I think it might give the other team confidence, 100%. but yeah, I think they'll be fine. I was going to say a little 100%. bit about the Wigan team. They, You could tell they wanted it more. It just means more to the Super League teams, I think. Like, NRL teams take the piss in these World Cup challenges, you know? they not saying that they don't want to win again. Obviously, they do, but it just doesn't mean the same. Like, you know, those Super League teams, they will... I think there was talk, like, when they won the title, their coach started prepping for Penrith, like, the next day, you know? So they've been game planning for that game for months, right? And they go into it with the expectation of winning and you know, with a perfect game plan where I think every NRL team that goes over there, they're, they're not watching Super League games, you know. what They don't scout them or anything. Well, maybe they do, but I just don't think they put the effort in. It just it doesn't mean the same. And I think one point that proved it was Bevan Finch when he won player of the game. You know, they asked him, they're like, oh, what does it mean to you? And he's like, well, to be honest, I don't really know. And his whole thing was during the week, Wigan had former players come in talking about the importance of this game. And Bevan Finch was like, I had to to, uh, put myself in the English players' shoes to see what they were feeling in terms of how important this game was to them. You had, you know, the Aussie player got player of the match over there in the Super League, Man of Steel, and he's he's had the same thinking like, oh, you know, World Cup challenge, oh, cool, but, you know, all those English boys are like, no, it's great. And I think even the commentary saying when they won it, they were like, you know, these boys are going to be talking about this game for... 20 years, you know, they're going to go into the pub, see each other like 10, 15 years later, they're going to be talking about how they beat Penrith in the World Cup Challenge. I think if Penrith had won it, they wouldn't be talking about it 10, 15 years from now if they meet each other, you know, it'd just be another <laughs> blimp on the radar for them, man. I think it's a different mentality, you know, but I also think it's good that the Super League teams win, personally, because they're just wouldn't be good for the game if they got smacked every time. So the fact that they can win shows that they can hang with the NRL teams. I think in a one-on-one, one-off game, anyone can beat anyone on their day. You know, but if they were to come over and play a season, not saying that they would be wooden spooners, because I'm pretty sure those top teams in the Super League could definitely push for the eight. But it's, it's just a different beast, right? There's a reason why everyone wants to play in the NRL. And if you go to the Super League, everyone thinks your career's over. Um, it's just different league, different 100%. style. Hmm. But yeah, Wigan, they um, were good. I, Bevan Finch, he needs to come back to the air out. He was on, bro. He was on. Well, he, here's a um, a slight debate there. It just came to my mind as you were talking about some of this, and I thought this could be, you know, uh, a way to either make this a more exciting event or to sort of increase the game's global, um, I don't know, exposure. So I'll go over these two things and then we'll debate them separately or just we'll just poke it apart a bit. So the first one is, would you like to see, you know, the wooden spoon of the NRL get relocated to the UK for a season? And have the winners of Super League get relocated to that loser's facilities for the season and um, play in the NRL. Do you think that would change? Do you think that the Super League team coming back over would then get shipped back 
to England the next season and see the Tigers come back to um, the NRL for another year? Um, in a perfect world, it would be cool to see. You know, if money wasn't an object and stuff like that didn't matter, um, yeah, having that promotion relegation would be cool. Do I think that the top team over there could miss, uh, make noise in NRL? I do. I do. Because they got skillful players, man. I think we'll catch them out. It's just a different style of game over here. That's it. And mm. whether they could adjust to it, just to a slight difference in rules. Um, yeah, but it'll be interesting to see. Do I think the Wooden Spoon team in the NRL would go over there and carve up? I would expect them to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do I think that they would win the grand final? Not too sure about that one, because again, on any given day, anyone can beat anyone. But I would expect them to be there or thereabouts. Like you would hope so. You've got a whole team of, what, 30 NRL players. Yeah, I would hope that if you go to the Super League, you would be ripping up and at least have a chance to come back if it was promotion, relegation. Yeah. It would be cool to see. Yeah, yeah, it would be an exciting uh, concept, that's for sure. <laughs> like, obviously, a whole bunch of logistics and finances come in with that. But, you know, like, we'll just say that, you know, the Tigers go over to Wigan and use Wigan's facilities and, you know, run the team out of Wigan. Wigan bring their team to the Tigers um, and run their facilities uh, and run from their home field and stuff like that. And then, who knows, say Wigan don't get, you know, the wooden spoon, say this season it's the dragons for example um now the dragons are over there with the tigers and now we've got wigan and saint helens over here <laughs> you know that, that that could be crazy um but you know hypothetical world be fun to you know sort of see and that way you can you know see whether or not the best from super league can hang with the even the regulars in nrl because it going from a world club challenge that's just a one-off match exhibition match pretty much into a you know a full-on year-long competition how can they go you know the i feel like it's a little bit more physical here a lot faster um super league it's a lot colder over there man it's, it's a lot warmer over here different climates different conditions um the try the end zone is like a lot bigger over here because they play on football grounds man that looks just dangerous <laughs> man that yeah that end zone is just stupid eh like what five meters in the nr it's what is it 10 it's definitely bigger eh you Something can tell like that. yeah yeah you see yeah, it on tv you're like bigger. that's tiny like, oh, got no room for that and they've got a runoff They've got a runoff in the NRL. So if you, mm, you know, plant yeah. the ball dead, at least you're not going to hit the signs and go into the crowd. <laughs> I think just back, um, going back on what you're saying, like seeing the Super League players over here, I think if that was to happen, let's say in a the theoretical situation, I think what would happen is that the superstars of those Super League teams, if they were to come over, I think more often than not, you'd probably see them say they come over we're going to come over and then they manage to stay here for about two or three years and then they get relegated back. I have a funny feeling those superstars would want to stay because they'll be playing in the best league in the world. So you'll probably see a lot of players like getting, say, relegated and being like, I'm not going over there and just break their contracts and then sign with someone else. <laughs> but yeah, it'd be cool to see those um, Super League superstar boys come over because, man, they can play. They can fucking play, man. And, uh, Hard out. Another one that also just come off um, off of this court at all. So that one is obviously a bit too expensive. But what's your thoughts on slightly shortening the season by maybe three weeks, right? Get a shorter season, but increasing preseason. So um, have your regular preseason, then send four teams over to Super League, bring four Super League teams over to Australia, New Zealand get those four teams from the NRL over in the UK touring around the clubs for three weeks um, and then get the four teams from Super League down here touring around some of the clubs for the three weeks of preseason, then send them back over home, have maybe um, one more week of preseason and then into the season. 
and then just sort of rotate through the clubs every year. So instead of, you know, it always being Wigan versus Panthers here and there, you know, Wigan can play New Zealand Warriors and Wigan will play, you know, the Dragons, the Tigers, the Bulldogs, just sort of mix and mingle through all the teams and the travelling teams can all change each year as well. Yeah, it's definitely a good idea right, for exposure of the game. They want to get it out there and put league on a global level. Um, it'd be cool. Would teams agree with it? Probably not. I think preseason's hard enough. And if you make them have to play four or five games, even if it meant shortening the season, don't know soon enough they'll go for it. It'll be cool for the younger players, right? Because that's where they get most exposure. So those under 20 guys or those fringe players, them getting an extra few games in preseason to really map out whether they've got the stuff to not only make the team, but push their case for being in at 17 on game day, yeah, it'd be great because, I'm going to be honest, we could probably do with another game or two to sort out our situation, what's happening at the club, who's going to be a half, is Taff really a fullback, you know, so for stuff like that and uh, forwarding the game to, you know, exposure and all that, great idea. Um but yeah, just just in terms of like the season, not too sure. But yeah, well, I think it helps develop those younger players, as you say, a lot more because now with a lot of player health and safety being scrutinised a lot more, um, you know, they're being a lot st- more strict with it. Mm-hmm. So players are having to take a lot longer time off throughout the season. I think this creates an opportunity to make sure that you're developing players and that um, you know when given the call players from development sections you know are almost there or thereabouts to go oh yeah i'm, I'm ready call me up coach I'm, I'm, I'm keen give it a run yeah no definitely i think just going off that idea one thing they could have done if they wanted to exposure and get more of the nrl free super league going it was around for a little bit and it was a good while it happened i think it might have run its course but why don't they just bring back the nines just go nrl v super league just have a whole pool you could take that to Las Vegas, you know, make a weekend of that. You know, obviously, you might have to put something in there like at least one superstar from each team plays, but they'd have to play a couple games, you know, then get them out of there. They can sell the game and then get all the young bucks over there. Good exposure. It's a different form of the game. It's like a teaser, I guess, into NRL and, or, you know, just league in general make it like a party atmosphere like it used to be when it was up in Auckland. But again, it'll just be cool to see NRL against the Super League in a different format. You could do that in the preseason, you know, and I don't think anyone would be would be mad about it. Just be, again, logistics, but just putting it out there. It could be saying that. Though, hard, yeah. hard. Ah, you know, these are just other ways that they can keep expanding and growing the game, just with different elements. And like, I understand that, yes, it's going to take like a lot more effort to um, get these nines teams sorted, or you know, having a longer preseason and making sure that you've got the depth to you know not wear out your full time players too early during preseason and things like that. But maybe even you know, it might be tough in the beginning, but sending over the young players. Um, and forming a nine squad with them so then you can see the emerging talent mm. and who knows that maybe that is sort of the pathway into that NRL draft that we were talking about you know maybe that's a space a time and space where you can showcase young talent that you know uh, big teams can then draft those players following that format and maybe that all happens over in Las Vegas and then round one kicks off and those players head back home potentially to new teams um, and then they just start on the wider training squad for those teams. Yeah, no, that's yeah, that's like the idea, right? And that's where we'd be going. And those Super League teams, trust me, they'll be taking it seriously. And like you said, there could be the Nines is a great place to unearth talent. You know, if you're a fringe player, maybe you're not quite cracking at one team, another team might pick you up just based on your performance. You know, so it would be great. And I think we'd unearth a lot more talent from the Super League try to get those boys over to the NRL and vice versa, man. It'd be great for the sport, I reckon. It'll push it to another level, expose it to a new country. And you could do it like sevens where it goes to a different place every year. One year might be Las Vegas, 
you know, next one, I don't know, you could take it to France and play in Paris. Like, how cool would that be? I don't think the players will be complaining about that. Um, take it to Japan, you know, like, they'll love it over there. I don't know how what league's like over there, but rugby seems to be going off. So, surprise, like, league hasn't looked to tap into that area. Uh, You've also got the United Arab Emirates. That could be another place to go. Like, they've got cash. And they're looking to spend it, man. They've, they've, you know, they've got Ronaldo playing over there. They've got um, Neymar playing over there, and they just threw the bag at them. And they're not even like worried about where the money come from. They just said, "Look, we want a league here. Make it happen." And people are making it happen. There's that boxing league that's there, so you know, rugby league could navigate that space somehow. Um, there's there's plenty of money to be made in sports still. Even in this day and age, it's just you've got to look to the right market and you've just got to want to get the game out there. And like we we're saying, fringe players, man, you don't have to put out your best um, nine players every game. You keep your, your best nine players for your starting 13 to play in the NRL comp. Yeah. You send your up-and-coming players and then you call them up if they don't get drafted yeah. after like the major comp. You could even make a rule that every team has to take like a, a legend over. You know, like yeah, even that. Like when Brad Fittler played in their there. inaugural nines. Yeah, yeah, like you know, so a rule like that. So then you have all the legends over there who'll be there to be able to tell their youth about the game and guide them through, and also again sell the game. If you take over a legend, take over say one superstar, and the rest you can just who the hell you want. Um, yeah, yeah, and it opens the possibility for international pathway programs yeah sure and then you can feed a lot of that money coming in from these spaces back into the islands back into small communities uh papua new guinea all those other places that league is already existing but just needs a bit more funds to help make it thrive so you know uh, if you're sending over any international squads like Samoa, Tonga, uh, Fiji, Papua New Guinea, those nations, send those guys over there for an international cup and let them get exposure over there. They'll get jersey sales, they'll get new fans because they'll be like, oh, did you see that Samoan team? They had Tuo, they had Luai, they had all these guys. So, you know, they'll be looking forward to finding out, oh, they play for the Bulldogs now and they play for the Panthers. So, you know, it, it'll all tie into itself. But when the nines come over, that will be an opportunity for them to go, oh, look, there's the Panthers there. Uh, let's go to this game. They might not have yeah. all the players that we love and know, but, gee, this is an up-and-coming player. Uh, let's know them before like they crack the league. Yeah. Definitely, yeah, man. So, in our round, feel free to take our ideas, but uh, if you do, we want we want to come. <laughs> we want to be there. Yeah. Be cool. <laughs> Please. And if any other podcaster steals this with a bigger platform, Credit us. Credit <laughs> us, you bastard. A shout out would be nice. Man, this idea. Mm. Yeah, this idea sounds amazing. And I guarantee you guys could debate this for hours. Yeah. Just like I know we could just keep going back and forth. Definitely. We could talk about this for a whole bloody podcast. Yeah. We could create a whole damn program for you and like <laughs> give the whole spiel, throw this to the NRL. Peter Vlandis, here you go, boy. Chuck this on your desk. <laughs> Look into this, brother. We got you, G. We got you. <laughs> well, yeah. So, I mean, after that long tangent, we're back into game <laughs> reviews from the weekend. And uh, did we go through? That was our first game, eh? And then we got sidetracked with this this yep. tangent. We went on a big, yeah. Uh, yep. Did a big hey, zig it, it we was... went to zag. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's, it's worth it, though, because I feel like there's no other opportunity to talk about something like that. It just sort of all come together and find out that that's what the practice run's all about, you know, just giving it a go. We didn't give this one a practice run. We just gave it a go. That's how my mind works sometimes. ADHD, I'm just going to railroad things. <laughs> so uh, jumping back into the game reviews, Bulldogs the other night, what went wrong? Yeah, man, Bulldogs against the Sharks. We put out a pretty strong team. Um, what went wrong? Too many handling errors. We had a completion rate of 60%. You're not going to win against any team if you can't complete. right? Uh, in offense, we looked okay. We could get 
uh, we had plenty of chances in their 20, so we were in the attacking zone quite a bit, which weren't clinical. Drew Hutchison forced a few passes he didn't need to, um, so he looked shaky. He kind of looked like someone that was trying a bit too hard to secure that number seven jersey, as opposed to just playing his game and playing what was in front of him. Uh, he, to me, looked like he forced too much. Reed. Our former captain, he's starting to get on my nerves already in the season as he started. <laughs> For me, it just looks like he tries too hard. He he always does this thing where he picks the ball up and he takes like three or four steps. I don't know why he does that and then and then decides to pass. Um not a fan of it. Just do what you do best, man. You had the best service in the game when you're at uh the Eels. Just fucking bullet that pass out. You know, give it to our 13 and let them do the rest. But yeah, I think he just forces stuff a bit too much when it looks like they overplay their hands. That's kind of the vibe I got and why we had so many mistakes. People just forcing stuff that just weren't there, uh, not not going for the high percentage play. Um, yeah, our defense, I was pretty happy for, for the most part. We're good at defending people when they're coming out of their own end well i guess every team in the nrl is that's where we look to force mistake and we got quite a few like we were able we were aggressive in d when they were coming out of their own end and it showed because we forced like three or four errors out of them which is real good however when teams get into our end and when they're in their attacking zone our defense is pretty suspect the first try they got was so soft so soft and it just the line wasn't connected Hutchinson and crew all shot up. Uh, Poasa from Minnesota didn't follow, so it left their gap, and Tay Wilson just went straight through untouched. So, still stuff we need to work on. I think our forwards got a little bit exposed. Um, just the size of our forward pack, I think that got that showed up a little bit because their forward pack just ran all over ours. Royce Hunt had a field day. Um, I'm pretty sure he'll like to play the Bulldogs every week after that performance. Yeah, I think the size kind of showed itself because there were times where we struggled to get go forward ball when our bench unit came on and as good as Kurt Mann and Curtis Morris is, you know, when you're all five foot nothing and way close to nothing as well, it's it's going to show up somewhere. Uh, but the boys... I think overall they'll be a little bit disappointed, but not too disappointed. I think they'll be happy in the defence. They just need to sh- uh, not have as many errors. Completion rate. Could only play 20 minutes. That was just always the plan. He was only ever going to play 20. Come off. Bronson Cherry, solid. I think he might have won the starting centre spot now, and I'm not mad at it. Blake Taff was good f- for most of the game, but he had a mere for five minutes where he dropped back-to-back bombs and then try to save a 40-20 and just did not go his way. His night pretty much went downhill from there. He just got into his own head. And, yeah, that it looks shaky. And he has moments where he's good, but then he has moments like that. Uh, and he lets those moments. I don't think he's able to just forget about it. Move on to the next player. Maybe the first one, yeah, he could forget about it, but it was in his head the next one, why he made the error in back-to-back. And then two sets later, because he had made those two mistakes, he felt he had to make up for it again. He made a third mistake. And at that level, you just you just can't do that. You're going to get punished. So a lot of learnings. Um, some good things. But it did kind of look like the Bulldogs from last year. Uh, just not enough in attack, not clinical, kind of lack a bit of spark or X factor. Like it would have been good if we gave kick out the dang ball. That would have been good. I think he only had like two or three runs, and he runs a hard line, man. Like why are we not getting the ball? I just don't. I don't know. They used him as a dumb as a decoy runner a few times, but when you got someone that's devastating kick out, just give him the freaking ball. Um, but yes, I think we're still better than last year, just from how we're playing and the team as a whole. But that probably showed me that yeah, we are definitely 
I don't see us pushing for that eight. I think we're going to be stuck in that 10 to 14 spot after that performance. So it's going to be a long year. Yeah, that's my uh, hey, yeah, look, thing that, of that game. Yeah. It, it was a, it felt like a quite a kind of like a, an arm wrestle kind of a game, even though the Sharks were, were winning the arm wrestle, it, it did feel like a kind of a gritty grinded out kind of a contest. Um, yeah, I, I was liking the look of Taff for a minute there. <laughs> I was like, shit, he's all right, eh, this young fella. And then, yeah, bang, 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 errors. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit, maybe not. But, hey, look, he's young. Um, maybe just find a good mindset coach that tends to sort players out or just have him not care. Mm. Um, like Ted Lasso always says, eh, and, and um, Ted, be like a goldfish. They forget in, like, three seconds, man, so... Yeah, I'm sorry, Sharks fans. I wasn't really watching for your guys' perspective. I was just trying to figure out what, what's going on with this Bulldog side so I could grill too a little bit about it. But, um, yeah, look, you've got potential. There's potential there. Um, and, you know, may, maybe a full 80 with Critter could be, could be, you know, a difference maker out on the field rather than just on the sideline. Um, obviously, preseason, you don't want to injure your, your, like, your new import straight away. Uh, like you said, kick out definitely needs to be fed the ball a bit more um you know a lot of this league the top teams use their forwards really well and the backs just clean up off of that and just shine because you know forwards help get you on the front foot and then the backs can catch them sleeping or retreating um and that's that's where you get that counter attack going so um yeah i think it's still going to be a season worth watching for you guys to see you know what yep. kind of gaps and um i think more or less you guys should be you know watching to see what props are on the other side of the field that you guys can poach next season <laughs> yeah well, we got our um, boy um sam hughes he didn't play much i think he had a concussion issue on in that last game against shark but he's signed till 2026 now which is good we signed zane tedavano for this season uh, former Penrith player, but I think he's coming off. He had a stroke like two years ago oh. in the Super League or something. Like, yeah, he had a stroke yeah. over there um, in like in game. So, but he's joined the team. I'm pretty sure he's in the squad now. Uh, he'll just provide with that um, leadership, I think, and that vet experience. Not too sure if he'll actually get on the mm. field or make the 17, but. Um, but yeah, also, even though the Sharks won, it was a gritty game, like you said, it was all over the place, but we have to re remember, there was a Sharks team without Hines, and they look completely different ah, with yeah, Nico Hines true. in their squad, and yeah, they also had a few opportunities they didn't quite ice, and I'm guessing if they were there, they'd probably beat us by at least two more tries, so... Yeah, Sharks are looking... I don't know. I think Sharks did what the Sharks do. They beat teams that they know they can beat. But it's yeah. whether they can beat yeah. those better teams. Yeah, yeah and I, I, I got to apologise to Sharks fans. I did disrespect them in earlier episodes. They aren't in my predicted top eight to finish this year. I do, I do apologise to you guys, man. You guys, you're clean. But, you know, I'm, I was just... I was hoping and wishing, you know, that it could be just an all Gold Coast... Uh, not Gold Coast, all Queensland um, teams in there, just so the Broncos can prove that they are the big brothers of <laughs> Queensland teams, that we, we still run the roost. Mm. Um, but, you know, looking through some of the preseason, you see the Cowboys and the Titans didn't make it into the top eight for preseason uh, challenge. So there we go. Neither did the Sharks, but that's neither here nor there. It's preseason, but still. Um, rolling over to our next game, the Warriors 2024 preseason has been quite um, quite good, I think. The first game against the Tigers, they did drop that game, but they played um, 60 minutes with 12 versus 13. So, you know, shame. Tigers still only won by two points. Um, but I think Roger Tuivasa-Shek can potentially win Dalian Centre of the Year if he stays healthy. 
his defense, bro, his defense has improved so much since coming over from rugby union. Like when he tackles, man, he tries to get over the ball like a rugby tackle and like clear them out kind of like he uses momentum rather than kind of just hold on and hip drop them down to the ground. He gets in under those ribs and pushes them back a meter or so. Not probably not a meter, but you know, there or thereabouts. Um Jazz Tavanga had a couple of errors um, that, yeah, kept those Dolphins' hopes alive in that game. <sighs> Hopefully they got, you know, they can get that sorted out. Jazz is a quality player, but the, the Warriors, for the first time in a long time, have a lot of depth coming through, especially in the forwards. So, if, you know, those guys on the bench aren't tightening up their game. They've got boys coming through. They can definitely push for that position. Um you know, Bunty's looking good. He can definitely make it back onto the bench. Um, we've got Laban. Uh, what's his first name? Can't remember his first name, but I like the look of him. He's he's an edge player. Um, who else have they got? They've got a couple of other good young players coming through that, yeah, they can definitely push um, some of those guys that, you know, you'd see as regular Warriors um, off the squad potentially this season so keep an eye on that warriors fans i'm definitely drinking the kool-aid i did enjoy watching capo out there he definitely brings something different that um you know josh current couldn't bring last season so it, it, it's good to see capo shining um i loved him at the broncos uh i think i'll still end up loving him at the warriors warriors man I've, i'm still riding high I'm, I'm drinking the kool-aid i think you guys can get there dolphins dolphins man Herbie, he's just addicted to the try line. He got another one this week. It took a little bit longer than last week, but he, he he's still getting across the line. Flegler, man, those two. They look kind of good in a Dolphins jersey too, not going to lie, but they look better in a Broncos jersey. But, man, look, Flegler's going to have a lot of work to do with an ageing um, Jesse Bromwich. I think Flegler brings a lot to the side. Being a younger prop, he can take a lot of the workload. So if you're a, a fantasy player, definitely buy in the Flegler because I think he'll be taking a lot of those hit-ups uh, early on in the sets. Dolphins, yeah, they they had a few errors which let the Warriors capitalise. And um, although their kicking game, their kicking game really exposed that edge of um, Montoya and Roger a little bit, but I think that's because Roger was coming in to cover fullback sometimes. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't quite able to make it across. And, um, yeah, Montoya was getting burned on the edge as well. Um, I think that might be the weakest spot for the Warriors is that other wing outside Roger mm. is just Montoya. So Who, is, that, if, is that their best Montoya play outside Roger? Yeah. Who else did they have? Did they have he was their else? starter last year. Pompey. <laughs> Um, Surely they got another. Person. Which fun fact? I heard on the um, broadcast the other day, Pompey was one of the only players to play every game last season for the Warriors. <laughs> yeah. Well, I heard he's going to so, be playing fun uh, fact. every game for the uh, New South Wales team, New South Wales Cup team. Vulcans. <laughs> hey man, now nah, look, hey, he actually he actually played pretty well um, in that preseason game in the weekend off the bench um i was surprised you know everyone knows i'm, I'm a bit of a pompey hater on the show uh, i don't even make it a secret it's no secret mm. but hey he seems like a great guy great player but um yeah just look warriors fans love to shit on him he gives up a few errors i actually don't mind him because it's been my team that's on the receiving end of his errors so i'm, I'm happy with it keep it coming uh if you'd like to play against our team every time i'd, I'd welcome it brother i know uh, um yeah i think there's still there's still a spot for him i think that that wing spot is wide open and yeah if they can get someone i think maybe even after round four that's when charms is predicted to come back maybe shift to opiki to that wing because he'll be starting fullback uh, for the first four weeks, and like, he's he's a solid player too. He's electric. They're not going to shift Roger to that fullback spot just because they really want him to get comfortable in the centres, rather than have him shift midway through the um, season. So, I think that's how they're going to play it throughout the year. So, if Charles does go down, to Opiki will be covering that spot, and Roger will continue to play in the centres. But Warriors fans, buy your merch. It's it's selling fast, man. It's selling fast. 
But hey, stop buying the merch and buy tickets to the games. <laughs> Go to the games, Marlo. It's worth more than the jerseys, trust me. Um, yeah, did you catch any of the highlights from that game at all? Um, not going to lie. No, no, I did not. Um... Two's not drinking the Kool-Aid, Fano. Two's not sold on the Warriors. He's he's still not sold, man. No, I wouldn't say that. I I think I had them in my eight. I expect them to to be good. I expect them to be there or thereabouts, but I guess that's where the I, I have the bar for them, so anything less would be a bit of a disappointment. I don't know if they can win it all, but I expect them to be there or thereabouts. You got Sean Johnson, they got a solid team. Um Yeah, just I don't know, man. I, I think they're good enough to make the eight, so I expect them to be there. So if they don't get no praises from me, they're doing what I expect them to do. <laughs> <laughs> Salty guy, this guy, man. He's. I think it's. I'm just so positive because our team's at the top, but hey, this must be what happens to the bottom two as they get bitter down there. Man. We were so good. Us, no, what... them, and the Tigers, we would always plan our... Um, mad mondays after like week five like week five you know we would already be talking to the tigers and the warriors about where we're going for mad monday are we going back to bali this time are we going to las vegas this time so you know last couple of years i've been used to their early uh you know planning the mad monday <laughs> nice and early unfortunately the warriors <laughs> don't want to be a part of that anymore so uh, a little bit annoyed they're ready to come hang with the big boys <laughs> they're ready to come hang with the big boys <laughs> No, nah, but hey, look, Warriors fans, don't get too excited though because it is going to be a tougher season for you guys. Uh, a lot of the teams will have you guys penciled now as a game to prepare for as opposed to last season. I think a lot of teams just said, ah, it's the Warriors, man. They're probably going to be a bottom team until, you know, midway through the season and people are like, oh, no, nah, this is an actual legit squad now. We've actually got to come prepared. So I think you'll see a lot more teams circling the Warriors going, shit, mm-hmm. here we go. What can we do? Um, so yeah, look, Warriors fans, I'm, I'm still predicting you guys to be up in the top eight. Same with the Dolphins. I think the Dolphins can get there. They've added a lot more depth to the squad. You can see it out there. Um, I still think they could probably use uh, a stronger halves pairing, but mm. outside that, they're a solid team. They're a solid team. Lots of veteran experience, you know, with the Bromwiches, um, you know, a lot of that Melbourne experience, Kafusi in the squad as well. So they know how to win championships. They've got a championship caliber coach. Um, everyone's writing Wayne Bennett off because of last season, but do you guys know how hard it is to start a club from zero? Pretty hard. Zero depth, no club history. So, you know, they're out there doing it. Um, so Dolphins fans, I think you guys can get excited. I hate yous, but get excited. Should be a good season. Um, <laughs> following that game, we went to Manly. Down there in Manly, it was the Sea Eagles versus the Brisbane Broncos. It was the Baby Broncos versus the No Name Sea Eagles. Um, as those two uh, prem side teams were already uh, in California, soaking up the sun over there, getting ready for the Las Vegas comp this weekend. So we got to see some young talent, and man, that Broncos squad has some up and comers, man. I saw Blake Moser. He's not bad. He's not bad. I like him. He's quick. He's sharp. And he, he sort of, he, he looks like he knows where he wants to go. Like he's not picking that ball up and just kind of going, oh, yeah, we'll just pass it to a prop. He's, he's already like thought about after this tackle, we're going to shift the ball early out to the left or I'm going to pick the ball up, take a stab and then sort of give a late pass or I'm going to go skip ball. He's, yeah, I think, because we've got, Adam Reynolds has just um, resigned with resigned, not resigned. He has resigned with the Broncos um, for another year. So I think this is going to be kind of a transitioning year. So he's um, also, once that contract is up, he will then move into the coaching staff yeah. and still help around with that area. So I think they're going to move Billy back into the halves because Billy used to be a half and Blake will come on into that um, starting hooking role and it'll be between um, Pax and Smoothie who's going to be you know the utility off the bench to be on the interchange I think that's what's going to happen in the future Um, because yeah I don't don't see them getting rid of Billy anytime soon coach's son and all Um, 
And he, he's, he's, a, he's not a bad player. I was going to say, um, one, I told you about that Blake dude. Heard it from me first. I heard too many good <laughs> things for him to be like, everyone's been talking about him. They've been talking about him for a while. He has to be good. But, um, you know, you mentioned... Yeah, I think it was episode one you did too. Yeah. Um, you talked about Billy Walters moving into that seven. What about how did Kurt Falls play? Because I figured he might be the one to take over from Reynolds. Well, the, yeah, that, that's the other debate. So he played all right. Um, I think he might have another training year and sort of come in as cover. Because um, I don't think they're going to sub him in just yet. Just not enough experience under the belt. Whereas, you know, Billy's been around for a little bit now. He's got that experience. Um, he'd be a great utility too. Imagine Billy coming off the bench or, or Blake having that interchange, having that two-headed monster like um, Melbourne did with Harry Grant and Brandon Smith back in the day. Look, it's a good headache for Brisbane to have, is having too much depth, which is what I liked watching in the weekend. We've got too much depth. Um but it's good to know that as soon as, you know, someone goes down and, you know, touch wood, that, you know, if someone goes down, we've got injury cover. Um, I just, I'm just a little bit wary of some of our forwards. They might be a bit too young at the moment. They still need a little bit more time to develop. Not saying in terms of um, errors or anything like that. It's just, it's a much more physical game playing up against, you know, full-time Premier League NRL players versus um you know your queensland or your new south wales cup players because some of those guys are part-time um but i am excited for the future i think the, my, the, this is this is probably my too early to tell sort of thing but i think you know we could not replicate what penrith has done in terms of championships but i think we can replicate what penrith has done in terms of next man up once our team starts getting depleted over the coming years I think we'll still be able to find next man coming through the ranks. Um, Benja, Ben Takura, love him, man. Love him. Hate hearing his name on commentary. Hate hearing Takura. But, mate, <laughs> I love him, mate. Big bopper. Big bopper. And Dean Mariner, man, he's good, bro. He looks fresh out of jail, but he's good. And because the Broncos went down two two tries early on in the first, um, so we're on the back foot. And, yeah, by the end of the half, we're up. And there was like five minutes left on the clock, and that's when we scored with um Hopawati out on the wing. You got a Hopawati in your squad. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got a Hopawati. Um, can't remember which one, but we've got a Hopawati on the squad, which is crack up because yeah, you know, Manly are synonymous for having Hopawati. Yeah. Um. So yeah, yeah, yeah we got a Hopawati. <laughs> he looks like Hopper too, eh? <laughs> he's got that. He's got that same look about him. Is he? Is he a son? One of the sons? Uh, he looks like it. I'm assuming he's a son. Uh, but yeah, man, that was a good game. Sea Eagles, again, just inexperienced um, from them. Trash. Young squad. Um, Kyle to half, I know. I, I don't really like Manly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're a weird team, um, mate. But yeah, look. Man. Yeah, yeah. It's the colours, I think. Uh, oh, well. But um, yeah, look, hey, who knows? That was definitely not a squad that you are going to see in Las Vegas. That was just, you know, that's your depth. Um, so, you know, once Daly retires, that's your depth. That's who you've got coming up. Once Turbo gets retired for injury, that's your depth. So, um, yeah, look, one thing I've enjoyed about this preseason, outside of, oh, yeah, the Broncos did take out the um, preseason challenge which means they take home $100,000 for winning the preseason challenge. Um, how many bonus points did they get in the end? Um, well, I think we just won on points for and against because the Roosters also finished up on 28, which is interesting because that's who we take on over in Las Vegas. Um, we scored 86 points for with 34 points against. They scored 82 points for with 32 against. The differential being 52 to 50, which just edged us out above um, the Roosters. So it was a close one. Could have went either way. Roosters don't really need any more money. Like You guys should be thankful that we won the comp because um, Roosters probably would have signed your best player for 100 grand. <laughs> um, 
Which games left? Oh, that's right. Because the bro's not here to yet again defend his team, this is a segment we're going to call Tiger's Roast. <laughs> Where we just sit down and degrade the Tigers. Look, Dragons fans, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, apologize to you guys right now. I'm sorry. You aren't the worst team in the comp. It's going to be the Tigers. How can you get that many points put on you against the Dragons in preseason and only beat the Warriors by two points in a 13 versus 12 game? <laughs> Come on now, Tigers fans. What are you doing? Benji, brother, I love you, but what's going on, mate? It doesn't look like you guys are going to come much further up the ladder than what you did last year. In fact, if there was a rung you could go below, I think you would hit it. If they put another team in the comp, you'd still finish last. <laughs> Even if New Zealand got another team, you'd finish dead last. You probably would do better off in Super League. I'm not, not going to lie, Fado. This is another game that I didn't watch. Um... <laughs> But I would have if I, I don't even think I realised it was the Dragons versus West Tigers because, you know, these are the two teams that I'm predicting and hoping will do worse than my Bulldogs. So, you know, this is pretty much a battle of the wooden spoon. Um, and, yeah, just to get smacked by the Dragons, you mean you're making them look like world beaters out here, like six tries? Come on, team, what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing here? You know, I don't even... Wait, did um, did Uppy play? Do you know if he played? Uh, I'm not too sure. Let's 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 have a quick look at the thing. In the meantime, you know what I will Teamless. say is yes. that with that, um, um, with that game there that they won, it meant that the Dragons finished preseason in seventh place. Yeah, they ended up above us. Two places ahead yeah. of the Bulldogs. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Did he play? Four Where's places he... ahead of the Tigers. So the, the Seagulls and the Titans both lost. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's preseason. Seagulls in their second game didn't even have any of their starters. Um, Titans, I don't know what's happening with the Titans, to be honest. I don't care. Shame. <laughs> Dizzy Haslam will have them ready by the start of the season. They'll be fine. Well, you'd better hope so, otherwise he'd probably get sacked from there too. Yeah. Where is he? He did, bro. Up he played 80 minutes, it reckons. I'm guessing, he was, I'm guessing he was just alone again. Oh, no, actually, no. I take that back because it says here everyone played 80 minutes and that can't be. They, yeah, they definitely ah, can't Roger, be. Roger. Yeah, I'm just looking at the thing now. I'll tell you what, Tigers fans... You have about two things to look forward to this season, and that's next season when Luai comes to town. Um, but again, I keep hearing good and that's things. And Super League. Yep. I keep hearing good things about this <laughs> young dude, man. Lachlan, uh, Lachlan Galvin. Apparently, the word coming out of the West Tigers and from how they've played, he's looking like that seven that's going to be next to Luai. So yeah, just oh, apparently he's um one to watch. Yep, you got Bolo at fullback. He'll probably hold that down for the season. You got Uppy all by himself. Coruscant, poor guy. <laughs> like, I mean, he does everything for your team. Like, get him some help, please. Get him some help. Yeah. Papali, um, Isaiah Papali hasn't really looked the same, or Papali e hasn't looked the same since he left the Eels. Uh, kind of expected, where's his name, Bateman to be better. They should play him at 13, man. Get him close to the ball. Not out on the edge where he has to get fed the ball. Let him play <laughs> that 13 and just let him and Uppy do their thing because that's all really what you got going for you. Stefano Uitukum, blah, 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 whatever his name is. He's a, <laughs> yeah. he's, a he's a good prop, but again, on a bad team. Um... Yeah, just hope you guys continue to suck, really. And I uh, hope you do yeah, get I their think Tigers spoon. woes are going to continue. <laughs> I think Tigers woes are set to continue. Uh, I do think that spoon is coming your way, Farno. As much as I hate to say it, look, I'm sorry, Vince, he's got to endure this. But you know what? Tigers fans, yeah. You know what? 
You can actually blame Vincent for this, yeah? Because he's a Crusaders <laughs> fan. He's wasted all your fellas winning on the Crusaders. They've won eight in a row, and you've won none in a row. So yeah. blame him. He's yeah. wasted all your good luck on the Crusaders. You know the That's one time he's going to show up, right? Is I bet you it's when like one of our teams play them. If if we lose to the Tigers, oh, I can guarantee you Vince will be on the next episode. It's going to be a whole hour of him saying how great they are. Yep. It's just, it's not going to be But fun. we'll still call that segment Tigers Trash. <laughs> be the one time they win. Nah, we better not lose to them. I'd rather lose to the Dragons before I lose trash to and the Tigers. tigers. <laughs> yeah, see, Dragon, I don't know, I don't even know any Dragons fans, but I feel like they're humble enough because they've won enough that they can be like, oh, it's just an off year. Bro, so it's actually... Tigers, they, they're hungry for a winner. <laughs> They're hungry for something. I was just about to say, you're right. <laughs> I don't think I've ever met a Dragons fan. Ever. Yeah. I, I can't name yeah. one person that... Uh, if hey, any of you is watching, if you're a Dragons fan, put down in the comment. I'm going to start roasting you too. I don't believe yeah, it. Yeah, hard up. I just don't believe that people can be a Dragons fan. Like, like Name me fucking five players on their like, team. Unless you're from St. George Illawarra. Yeah. yeah. I can't name anyone since like Jamie Salwood, Mark Gasnier, um, <laughs> what was it Brett Morris, Jason Nightingale. Um, That's who else did they have on that team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's they had that bald white guy, Michael Wayman. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah. Oh, those are some OG names. Sea OG. Dragons fans, I got your fellas backs. <laughs> got your fellas backs, man. Hmm. Don't come for me in the comments, Tigers <laughs> fans. Get out of here, man. Get out of here. Um, but man, look, hey, I'll give you guys a rundown of who, who um, came where in the preseason challenge, just so you guys can kind of get a base of where your team might be at this season. Remember, it's just preseason. Not everyone fielded great teams. I mean, look at Manly. They're down at the bottom. Um, but I think that was just a tactical move because they're obviously playing in Las Vegas. They want to put the best foot forward. They're going up against Magic Johnson's um, Brisbane Broncos, and they got to compete against bloody the roosters and um what's that guy russell crowe's rabbitos so the sea eagles are going over there with zero street cred um so they, they gotta they gotta put out the best team possible to get some new fans over there um so they came in dead last the titans come in just above them again no loss uh, no wins sorry the sharks at 14th bunnies at 13th cowboys at 12th tigers at 11th Get used to that one, Tigers, because, hey, enjoy that. Lap that up, because that's as high as you to get in the season. <laughs> Storm at 10th, which we know they're going to be well above 10th. So, everyone, screenshot that. Laugh at Storm fans, because when the season comes around, they'll be at 1, 2, 3, or 4. So, take a screenshot of that. Enjoy that. Laugh it up. Bulldogs, you're in at 9th. Take a photo of that. That, that, that. Hang that on the wall for the season. Farno, ninth, just outside the eight. You came above the storm, above the Tigers, Cowboys, Bunnies, Sharks, and Titans. So that's your bottom, your bottom eight. Now the top eight: Eels, Dragons, Warriors, Dolphins, Knights, Raiders, Roosters, and the Broncos. Up the mighty Broncos. Um, so look, good preseason. I enjoyed watching a lot of the preseason. It was just good to see footy back in action um come and join us again on thursday where we will break down um not break down but we'll, we'll give our american audience uh a bit of an understanding of how rugby league works because they are going to kick off round one in las vegas so we will preview those four games coming up this weekend and we'll have another couple of fun activities for you guys to tune in with us and as always we'll always have our papers as a rock and who knows maybe vince joins us on Wednesday, maybe he gets a bit of FOMO or he gets a bit angry from this podcast because we just ripped the Tigers, man. Shit. But um, no, look, join us again. We we've enjoyed having you guys here. I'll throw over to two for any uh any words. Yeah, I just want to go back to more roasting of the West Tigers because I just had a look at the stats <laughs> before and it's uh it's quite amazing, bro. Tigers had a completion rate of ninety five percent. I talked about how the Bulldogs lost because we had a completion rate of 60%. Do 
Dragons completion rate was 68%. So apparently you can win with a shit completion rate. You just have to face the West Tigers. And unbelievable. <laughs> they had um, 30 more runs than the Dragons. Uh, 100 more post-contact meters than the Dragons. It's, I mean, just just don't understand. Like A lot of the stats look like they favor the West Tigers, and yet you still got smoked. You still got pumped. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, they had more position of the ball, 54 to 46. Uh, what else did they have? Oh, they they had more tackle breaks at 50 to 40. Um, kicking more kicks. I reckon here West Tigers had three forced dropouts. That's good. What let them down was, oh, they had more missed tackles, 70, oh, 50 to 40 missed tackles, 21 to 12 ineffective tackles. Oh, the Dragons, bro, 11 errors to the West Tigers, 5. Just oh, holy heck. Penalties conceded, 7 to the Dragons, 4 to the West Tigers, ruck infringements, 3 to 1, inside of 10 metres, 3 to none. I mean, all those stats point towards what should be a close game, if not the West Tigers winning, except they want to get pumped. So, yeah, I'll stop bagging on them. I'll leave that to you. I'll leave that to next week when they get smoked in their first game, hopefully. Um, nah, see, that's the thing, though, because we've got to wait until the following week, right, before we get their games. Because we've got the Las Vegas games this weekend, and then we've got to wait a whole last week before the rest of the games kick off. Yeah. Do they have a buy round in week one? They do. They've got the first week buy. Oh, they do, too. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's about this? They'll be the only time they'll be at the top of the table because they get the two points for beating the bye. So, <laughs> you know what sucks for Tigers fans though <laughs> is that they're every team's bye. Like every other team gets an extra bye round whenever they play the Tigers because it's essentially the same thing. <laughs> I just I remember like, I just bruh. remember last year. Because I think the West Tigers, how they lost like their first whatever games, their first four games, and then they had a bye. I remember I messaged Vince and I was like, bro, you guys won to you, finally got two points. <laughs> he was like, oh, true. And I was like, yeah, bro, it was a pretty hard fought game where you guys only just won. He's like, oh, who do we play? And I was like, oh, you played the bye. <laughs> 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 and you nearly lost to them too. <laughs> <laughs> Had to go upstairs for the final <laughs> try. <laughs> oh, oh hell! Oh. Sorry, Tigers fans. Look, oh. hey, we're not sorry. If our co-host wasn't a Tigers fan, we probably would have go this hard on you. Blame him. It's his fault, <laughs> and he's never here, so it's even worse. He's got no one to defend you. And if oh, one of you West Tigers fan want to come hate... on the podcast and defend your team, come through. We'll put you on the hot seat. See how you do. We will, we will. Uh, we'll also we'll make you quiz. We'll put you in the, in the quiz. Um, one thing I will say, one thing I will say is that hopefully in, in you know, the coming years, we can get around to some of these clubs and, you know, we, we can put our, our, our money where our mouths are and we'll see if we can run a few challenges with the big boys and, you know, we'll, we'll reap the, the consequences of our actions eventually. So... Um, <laughs> Any, any NRL teams want to call us up and tell us, put up or shut up, we'll be there. It'll hurt, but we'll be there <laughs> to fly us over or hit us up and use her in Aotearoa. We'll come to your followers' training runs and get a hiding. <laughs> uh, but no, yeah, look, thank you all so much for uh, staying tuned throughout the entire show. That was the practice run, this one. It was a lot of fun, man. I had fun with this one. We, we come in a little bit underprepared, but I think we, we still managed to just chop it up and, and get through as much content as possible. I hope you guys are enjoying the this version of the practice run and um, we'd love to say thanks to 99 Dreams for uh, powering our, our episodes. You can go check them out at 99DreamsNZ on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, or 99dreams.co.nz to find out. Uh, where our podcasts are and where um, our merch might be when we get down the line and create a merch line or whatever. Um, 
So it's 99drink.co.nz. Go support the brand that keeps us going. Um, yeah, so tune in for Thursday's episode. We can't wait to see you guys. Like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to share. Check out our socials. Stay in tune with us. We will be getting a Discord up and running soon so we can talk to you guys more personally about some of the content coming up this season, some of your guys' predictions, and uh, you guys' fantasy teams. We're making a fantasy team at the moment. We probably won't have the capacity to update it all season long, but hey, we'll, we'll do our best. And if you guys beat us, cool story, bro. <laughs> we ain't never played before. <laughs> but I'll throw it over to two for any last words. You do what you want to do, my bro, and you close out the show. Yeah, man. No, thanks for those that have been watching from near or far. Uh, we'll catch you all on our next episode on Thursday. Hopefully you guys tune in and you're enjoying the content. But as per usual, cheers to the church and ma te wa.